Well, I'm testing out this error message that shows up on YouTube saying that you're not allowed to upload your video. You're currently not allowed to upload your video. And somebody recommended, oh, try photo booth video and then upload it from there. So that's, that's the game plan. That's what's happening. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and uh, this is still the same painting that's going on in coat. It's, uh, it's, it's something I just have to push through, but it's driving me a little bit batty. It's driving me a lot batty. Um, this painting is, <laughs> if you've been watching me, it's been lasting a long time. So, it's not my regular flow. And, um, it's a little upsetting also. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this, this painting to go on this long. And, um, but, you know, as I look at it now, I'm thinking that it's, you know, I'm probably just over the halfway mark. And that's, uh... I don't know. That's it's uh it's overkill. Now I wonder now I'm guessing this is how Bruegel felt doing his really high detailed paintings, spending all of his time on them. But he had probably mastered that one style and was able to crank it out quickly. Where this is kind of a uh, me mixing trying to mix styles a little bit, mixing techniques, trying to come up with my own, my own solution to this problem, the problem being the painting itself. Anyway, the other problem is I don't have a lot of memory, open memory on my computer, and so photo booth is probably going to eat up the remainder of my memory and um, and then just shut my computer down stall it out and I don't know if I'll be able to just move it right on over into into YouTube but anyway but anyway <laughs> But anyway, so what's been going on? What's been going on, YouTube? Um, Ludite Returns is back uh, with a new name, um, which I'm not used to just yet, so I couldn't, I can't remember it right off hand. Um, so, if I remember, I'll put a link in the low bar. And he's always interesting to listen to. He's a little more flamboyant than I am, I think. But at least he's attentive to his videos, you know. He faces the camera and he doesn't mumble and go on and on for, for so much time like I do. But, uh, yeah, yabba dabba do. So, um, the theme that he brings up, I mean, his, his shtick, and I guess a lot of people's shtick is to take sides on the antinatalism debate and, and just keep going from there, and my latest thoughts about life are that life is a flowing current of generation to generation and that we kind of stumble through our 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 relationship with our sexuality and our metabolism and we end up generating life and that life is the ultimate case 
in which to experience all things and that you couldn't experience anything if you weren't around you wouldn't experience judgment you wouldn't be able to consider the antinatalist debate at all so this idea of getting consent from something that's incapable of consenting is it's as absurd as trying to hold in your turds when you got bad diarrhea you know you're a, you're a goner it's gonna come out one way or the other sooner as opposed to later and um, and that's what trying to obtain consent is so Ludite Returns last video antinatalism is a farce I thought was was kind of kind of funny kind of up up my alley it's like the idea of ending that which measures all things like a, a the human consciousness I mean the, it, you know Gary's always saying you know you're, you're you're playing God and my retort to that is no you're not playing God you're playing human you're playing mammal and organism you're not playing God you're just doing what the other animals do and this bullshit that life is equivalent to suffering is absurd I and mean, the majority of life is not suffering by the way speaking of suffering I got my neck brace off but the ligament running from my spine up to the back of my skull I don't know if it's multiple ligaments or one ligament or whatnot but is totally stretched out and the doctor says it takes a long time for those ligaments to heal because there's no blood going directly to them. And um, so they're just, they're going off of the blood that's in the body, that's around the area, and not being fed directly to it. And uh, so it just takes longer to, to heal. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, see, I'm working on, I'm on the middle texture now, and I've kind of got a recess back into the background texture yet again uh, while I'm making this up and, and then pull out the highlights. Um, but I'm still working on color, trying to figure out the colors that I want. I just went to see uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2, the, sec the sequel, and that was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, Father's Day, had a, had a pretty good Father's Day. I stink of, of campground smoke, of burning fire and smoke right now. I spent a lot of the day at a campground with my dad and my brother and his family. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! What kind of luck do I have? I'm trying to figure out my luck in life. How lucky am I? Am I lucky because I'm white and because I'm male? Or am I lucky because I self-sabotage and because I've seen shit that people don't regularly see? So I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking like, okay, how many people, if they were hanging out in their living rooms and an orb came flying through their living room and did a little dance for them and then darted out of that living room and you saw it with a friend... How many people would, would make a pact with their friend right then to never nut up and tell anyone and just let that be their little secret? How many people do that? 
and then how many people do say, okay, I saw something, you know, and validate, validate that happening. And I'm thinking, well, you know, at least I know my own character that, that I'll, I'll vouch for that story to my deathbed. Um, you know, unless somebody is under threat and uh, I've got to save somebody from imminent danger by lying about it. And then what that says about interdimensional or hyperdimensional environments, ecosystems, entities, you know, and that that's the other thing is is I haven't just seen one thing, I've seen multiple things. So I'm like a multiple whack job. If I just saw one thing, that's almost forgivable. That's almost an awe-inspiring story. But when I go on and I say, well, then this happened and this happened, it was as if this window of time opened up between 2007 and 2011 that that periodic fissures uh, came about and even now I'm not so certain of my relationship with basic sounds and clicks and creaks and synchronicities and other things like that I'm not certain I'm not certain what to say about those about those things anymore um, because, because I'm, I'm always wondering, is that a sign from beyond? Is that, is that another thing manifesting itself? Is that something I need to be paying attention to? And it's absolutely maddening. I just, I go mad. And, um, and then I'm stuck. Yep, then I'm stuck. In the middle. But all I know is, is this whole notion of Christianity, like I don't know whether or not to buy into Christianity. I don't know whether or not to buy into descriptions of God as being all-knowing, all-good or loving, and all-powerful. All I know is he's more powerful I don't know about the loving part, but it sure feels compassionate when I'm in the throes of it. Um, but it's hard to objectify what it means to be all loving and then all all knowing or all powerful. I can't say he's all powerful, just more powerful than I am. And I grant a he status, even though I should be really granting uh, multiplicity a plurality status because um, uh, I'm essentially as a theist I'm a polytheist that's narrowed my thoughts like I can become a monotheist in my mind but my recollection of events, evidence to me, yields difference between this experience and this other experience. Um, and they're so dynamically, radically different from one another that I say, I say, hey, <laughs> I say, hey, what's going on? And oh my God, and I try, I try all the time for a revolution. You got a love for non blondes. Speaking of blondes, I'm going to paint the booties on this blonde chick. So anyway, so I go to this movie, this animation movie, and the credits are just packed with animators and sculptors and background artists and color and lights and effect. And I'm thinking, what does, what does 
the luck of one painter guy competing with all of these people, not to mention all the programmers that build all that 3D software that's being used. And the people on my team are are uh, the canvas makers, the gesso makers, and the paint makers. And then it's all up to me to come up with something. And that, that's kind of my excuse. Like, hey man, do I need an excuse as to why my painting isn't as eye-catching and flowery as, as a children's movie in 2014? I please get a pass? <laughs> I get a little leniency? For making a static image? For sitting here, like I'm contemplating, okay, what color's her dress? What color's this guy's skin? Is this guy gonna be another white, pink guy? Or am I going to paint him like light blue? I think I'm going to paint him light blue. I like, I like to paint my gestures blue. Oh, uh, so I was all going off about oil paints and how great they were. And, and, then, and then I take these days off not painting, partially because I couldn't figure out what to do to solve the problem that YouTube wasn't letting me upload. I thought maybe I had... A strike on my account or something like that and um, so that threw me for a loop but it turns out that apparently YouTube is forcing changes and making people migrate to Google Hangouts and that's a bit absurd All for the mon, the homogenation of humanity. We're all being recorded, homogenized, dictated to by technology, the realms in which our expressions are, are, are to be put forth to the world. I mean, I'm glad we still, for the most part, still hold on to our own minds. I guess. I guess. You know, I was trying to think of what it means, the phrase, speak your truth. Speak your truth. Because I like that better than arguing like, I'm here for the truth. Like the truth is so not only unachievable, it's, I think it's a human farce to really quest and think that one's acquiring the truth and actually expressing the way that it is as if it is, is, is so crystal clear to everybody. All perceptions about how it is are known. And I, I think it's, I think the real joke is, is truth questing. I think that's the real joke. And I keep reiterating that because that ultimately, well, my statement it must be true. I must be arguing that my statement about truth not being true is true. And then I'm caught in that little conundrum. No. No, sorry. I'm not caught in any such conundrum. It's trying to walk around the outside of it and peer into it and find out the limitations of what it is you're actually questing and what it is you're actually stating. 
Oh, I watched a Thou Art That video today where he's talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson kind of moving science into the economic marketplace and how the economics of how culture would be if it adhered to science and how cultures, how science relationship with economy is currently built. It's, it seemed like a, a wonderful topic. Um, so I like that video. I rarely like videos because I know they're going on a list and that sometime in the future I'm going to just want to kick back and watch all my liked videos. So I really have to, I really have to like a video to click the like button. But hell, if I disagree with a major statement in a video, I'll, I'll either leave it alone or I'll dislike it. Okay, so what have I done besides paint a little bit of the skull and that guy blue and we're going on 20 minutes and I shaved my beard and got a haircut. Still on painkillers, still drinking alcohol, still a pain in my ass, my back, my neck, my feet. Just, just keeping myself updated in that department. Boy. So, I don't know if I should go into it, but a good friend of mine is going through a breakup, a heartbreak, and it's just really sad that uh, there so many relationships end in tragedy. People don't know what they want when they're starting into relationships, so they're not even certain of the type of person they want to get involved in and end up falling in love with and spending their time with. And um, I think, you know, if I have any choice in the matter and there's any future relationships that come my way, I just hope I get some initial instinct about the other person that I, I well, like the last person I met, they they accepted my spiritual stories out of hand without any problem whatsoever. They didn't even flinch because they have their own. And that was really relieving. But I sat there and I thought, this person doesn't make small talk. They don't know how to just shoot the shit about anything. They're all work and no play. And um, something inside said, don't, don't, don't go for this. But for the most part, my, yeah, I mean, my instinct was just telling me something's off. Something's not complete on this, so don't go for it. And I kind of let it slide, and now I'm feeling a little bit guilty about not, not, working with that one a little bit more to see whether or not there was anything that could have come about, you know, like a, a slower process relationship, something where you really have to kick it into low gear and just move super slow, slowly, and uh, until you can see how that relationship starts to unfold. Anyway, I probably shouldn't push my luck with this with this uh, video. Then again, it seems like it's doing okay. 24 minutes. I'll upload it and then delete it off my system. That should free up some space. Anyway, back to luck. 
some people uh, put in a lot of work and they're still not lucky and then other people put in lesser work for a lesser period of time and they get they have greater results their their luck is is substantially greater their environment whatever they've co however they've colluded with their environment to yield better success it's, it's worked out for them you know so there's something to be said about having a talent in something and then being able to execute it and then having it land in front of the right audiences consistently making certain that you're having as many eyes see it as possible and that you're relating with the people that are seeing it in you know an enjoyable fashion and that they're enjoying the work that's being put forth in front of them A lot to be said there. So, so people that think that they have everything figured out, that they know they they know how things work. You know, I'm watching this guy Tween Tuo on here, and every one of his videos are very stark when it comes to what the limitations are of what he's saying or I shouldn't say the limitations of what he's saying but the the self-appointed limitations of what it is he's describing as once again the truth and how he's negotiating over this and he seems ultimately confused or historically abused in some way to have this kind of robotic speaking process that he has um, and he's obviously under the influence of, of Gary's kind of truth capture device truth capture process and um, and I don't know, he's he's young, I think he's in his mid-late 20s, maybe he's approaching 30, something like that, but uh, he, um, I mean, what to, what to, what to, what to say about the guy without being you know, overtly harsh, other than some people, you know, Icarus and Daedalus, and Icarus flies too high, flies, flies towards the sun, crashes, Daedalus is able to fly. It's not in that order, but the point being is that uh, Icarus fails at his flight, and you see some people, some some younger people, and in, in you're anticipating that their flight is going to be a much smoother ride than other people's flights. And by flights, I mean how they're going to project themselves through time. It's going to be a, it's going to be an easier listening, more. Um, palatable flight you know like you're on Delta and you get your peanuts and your blanket and your pillow and you've got everything that you need and you have a nice enjoyable flight into your future and then the other ones that are in a damn lightning storm bumper jet kind of bouncing all over the place petrified And it's it's really odd, but I admire the bumper jet one more. Um, I think it's a rougher ride, but I I think 
because of what I think about about karma or about working on something for so long that it eventually gives in and makes makes itself manifest that whatever suffering one brings to the plate that there's like a grand karmic wheel that sometimes comes around that that gives that dog their day and um, so where where the more palatable person riding just ends up falling into the main street malaise mainstream malaise of of their existence and they may be happy in some mundane sort of way but they don't ultimately get to advance dungeons and dragons and uh, then again I can't I, I'm, I'm here presuming that there's something about whatever course of conduct I made in life that has these supernatural events occurring in my midst as if I somehow petitioned successfully petitioned to have them done without knowing I was petitioning them in the first place and I can't say that that's the case at all as far as I know I'm just some guy with whiskey on his breath and the, that likes to paint and think odd, awkwardly about so many things that uh, eventually was able to uh, witness what I witnessed. Maybe I need Piro back on another phone call so we can talk more, not about our doubts, even if we are in a matrix, our doubts about gravity or about suffering but maybe I could get him in just to talk about what a physics would be like. Kind of like falling into a fractal patterning where... I, it might have been a movie called like The Thirteenth Floor where they generated a simulation of life and you could go into it and, and then when you popped out of it you were in your own life and it was very much like The Matrix. I think that's the right movie, I'm not certain. But where each progressive notion of creating a reality is an internal fractal in yet a greater fractal of existence, a higher dimension, a bigger fractal being a higher dimension. Okay, so I've darkened that. I'm not making a lot of headway too quickly. And, and the thing that's killing me is I'm about ready to pay a model to model as my, uh, as a Snow White for a Snow White, or not a Snow White, a Sleeping Beauty painting. And so I kind of want this one out of the way, but this one has so many hours in front of it. And so... <laughs> Oh, uh, this one, this one has so many struggles on it that I might leave it in coat indefinitely because it might not naturally come together anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I, I almost think it would be better if I woke up in 1992 prior to the internet being as big as it is, prior to 3D animation being as, as lovely as it is, working on the same piece, I would probably give each individual character a greater care than I'm giving to them right now. And that's, that's kind of sad to say, but, but I kind of think that. the influence of of movies 
and media on modern day painting. I was trying to think of why why are there so many painters that paint um, using stencils? I was like, why are they doing that? And I thought it's a reaction to the complexity and the subtlety that they find in in movies and media currently. So they'd rather deal with ink and the edges of ink to plastic than than mastering the the paintbrush, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. I'm definitely attracted to stencil artwork lately. I kind of want some under my belt. Kind of want to do some. I'm going crazy, crazy on you. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. My cat just jumped on me and scared the shit out of me. Well, it's going on 1 o'clock in the a.m. Not that I really give a shit. Not that I really give a shit about the time. Mm -hmm. I'm more curious to see whether or not I'm going to even be able to upload this video, so I might as well upload it and then suck it up and wait for another day. Um, yeah. I'll probably paint a little bit longer, actually. Yeah, you know, I, I did paint on this thing a little bit while I've been on this break. From YouTube and part of me really needed to get into the painting without feeling like I had to speak or without feeling the sensation of an eye staring at me um, and so I think I'll work more sporadically and periodically in the painting um, and do do some more of the painting without the camera on. I did want a record to see how it is I would get to this bump, this hating of the painting, this frustration about the painting, and kind of how I get through it. But I think what I'm just going to notice is that when I put my brush to the canvas and I stroke it and I paint it, that it ends up solving itself just naturally. It just naturally does that. Still don't know what to paint that guy's skin. What color to paint it? Anyway, yeah, yeah. I got some things to say. I got some things to say to all of you. No, I'm I'm chasing topics as usual, as my mo dictates. Okay, well, there's forty minutes. Um, uh, oh, yeah, I was going to bring up Conference Report and Earl. They're a funny duo. Um, yeah, Conference Report mentioned having a homosexual experience in one of his videos, a singular homosexual experience. And I thought that was kind of uncanny that he wanted to disclose that. Um, because it's a a particular type of straight guy that experiences homosexuality and then is repelled away from it and I don't know I've been I've had um, group sex scenarios with other men in them and um, that's about as close to homosexual experiences that I've been in but it was it was nice to hear something new f about somebody that I've followed for so long on here. 
Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, if you guys want to recommend a color of dress for this character in the comments below, please feel free to do so. I'm going to close it down. Ciao.